What's up everyone? It's your boy Nolan Rad 89 here bringing you another video and today it's a ranking video. We are going to be ranking all the Puppet Master films. As you know, if you've been currently watching and are subscribed to the channel, I've been doing reviews over the last month or so going through all the Puppet Master films. So I'll have the playlist linked in the description so you could click on that and check out if you want my in-depth thoughts about any particular type film because this one's just going to be, like I said, run-of-the-mill ranking where they lay and why they are at the spot they're at. That's what you're going to get from me today. And of course, you might be getting some spoilers and stuff. So if you haven't seen them, go run out and watch these films and then come back so we can talk about it. This is a fun franchise. Like Puppet Master is one that I hold near dear close to my heart because I got introduced to it at a very young age. So it has a really strong nostalgia vibe to it every time I return to it. So like I said, let's get into this. We got 13 films to talk about. Roll it. We have 13 Puppet Master films to get through, so let's get this list kicked off right away with the bottom of the barrel. And for me, this is my least favorite out of all the films in this franchise. This is the one that I would like want to erase from this earth. I have a fun time or a passionate love for every other ver every other film in this franchise besides this particular film, and that's Curse of the Puppet Master. This for me is just the most egregious, the one I hate. It's just, I don't like the way it looks. I don't like the acting or the characters in it and the story. And they really ruin the puppets. And the puppetry work is awful in this one. And this is a remastered kind of version. So it has like, you know, the new footage or like, or like new remastered footage. But then it also has original 35 millimeter footage on it as well. So it's just really jarring. And like I said, for me, this is the one that really messes up the continuity and like bugs me the most that I actually have like a disdain for. Coming in at number 12 is going to be Blade Iron Cross. I don't own this one, but you could currently stream this one on Tubi. That's where you can check it out for free. I believe it's also on Shudder as well. But Blade Iron Cross, man, this film for me is just kind of criminally boring. I don't hate this film or dislike it heavily or anything. I like the fact that it continues off of the Access trilogy and we get the storyline still with Eliza as our lead. And she has Blade in, in her possession and they go on a revenge spree. So I love that aspect of the film. It's just the the oh man the villains are the worst i think in the franchise one of the worst and for me like i said it's criminally just kind of a boring film so that's why i have it here at this number 12 spot number 11 is going to be puppet master the legacy and yes this one's famously known for being at the bottom of the barrel of most people's list for me it's not because it actually has stuff that i enjoy about it even though it's like 75 percent old footage and it's just like chopped together of Puppet Master 1 through 5 or even Curse I believe is in this one as well they continue that but I give a lot of respect to Puppet Master The Legacy because even though there's only about like 20 minutes of new footage they really go a long way and a, a respectable route of trying to tie all the films in continuity wise so this is actually a good film to watch if you're really diving into the Puppet Master franchise and you're kind of confused about things or you really want to kind of lay down the lore and where all the films lie and all that kind of stuff time-wise, this is a really good film because it explains all that and goes through Toulon's backstory, the history of the puppets, everything is in this film. Like I said, the only thing that really sucks about it is that it's 75% stock footage of stuff that we've already seen in previous films. Now we're here at number 10 and the number 10 spot is going to go to Access Termination and this is the third film in the Access Trilogy and man for me this one is just, I love the protagonists in this one, the psychics, I really think that's really interesting. There's cool interesting villain puppets to go against Blade and Tundler and Pinhead and stuff so I like that aspect of the film as well. It's just again our villains in here I find too cartoony too silly and this is the film where they really hammer it down hard with the psychic concept which I think it's used much better in other films in the franchise and this one they just double down hard on the psychic stuff and I just really didn't enjoy that. And coming in at number nine for me is going to be another Access film, and that's going to be Access Rising. And this one's up here. I have more fun with this one than a lot of the ones lower down on this list because it's just campy, silly fun. We have a gorgeous, fabulous side lead in here. She's fantastic. Like, I've never found the hots for a Nazi woman as much as I've seen in this film. But also the puppets, we get the introduction of the evil puppets that we see in Access Termination. You get their creation and seeing them, Blitzkrieg and, you know, Kamikaze. You get to see their creation in this film. 
the scenes with the doctor that the villains have captured and they're trying to create like an undead Nazi army. It's just can't be silly fun. It's still very low budget and you can really tell that aspect of the film and it hurts it a lot. But also uh, the protagonists in here I think are actually better actors because they recast the protagonists from the previous Access film. So I actually find them more entertaining and more enjoyable in this film as protagonists. But you'll find out why the other Access film is going to be a little bit higher up on the list. Rolling in at our number eight spot is going to be Retro Puppet Master, and this is one that I have a very soft spot in my heart. I know, in my heart, hot. <laughs> I have a very soft spot in my heart for, and I know it's only the number eight one, but it's basically like almost halfway up on the list. And for me, Retro, it does mess up continuity-wise a lot of stuff with the franchise in terms of when Toulon learns the secret to the puppets, how he executes the secret to the puppets and creates them and stuff. A lot of that is messed up in this one. This is the first one where they kind of introduce also like some of the other aspects of diving into Sutex kind of legend and like all that stuff. They do a little bit of that in Puppet Master 4 and 5, introducing Sutex for the first time, but this one has a more prominent like kind of side villains that are really really silly but it has a hallmark kind of lifetime type feel to it and that's why i really like retro puppet master it has a good score and i actually think our leads our two leads in here the our female and male that plays the young toulon great fabulous together great chemistry coming in at number seven we have puppet master five and puppet master five this is a great double feature watch with puppet master four and we have the continuation of Sutek as the villain as he sends this high priestess kind of demon to attack the puppets and i like puppet master four and five because they're the ones that embrace our puppets as actual heroes you know they go full-blown rick is one of my favorite protagonists and that these films have to do with his storyline the main reason Puppet Master 5 is a little bit lower than the other ones you're going to see coming up is because I feel like this film has a lot of filler stuff and to be honest you could have shortened it to about 25 minutes and just added it to Puppet Master 4 and I think it would have been fine as just one film. So coming in at our number six spot, right out of the top five, I don't own this one yet, but I want to pick it up, and that's Puppet Master Littlest Reich from 2018, the reboot in this franchise, and this one, they just go balls to the wall, all the way for the kills, some of the craziest freaking kills you've ever seen in this franchise. I know there's some touchy subject matter and some stuff that people might not enjoy about this film. It very much turns our puppets just into straight villains, and it's a straight slasher horror concept that goes for the practical effects that's the main crux of this film but it actually has a really good cast too as well and that's why puppet master little's reich is up here because i'm such a gore hound and i have a fascinating love with this cast like they're all funny and i think they deliver on their jobs now opening up the top five but before we get down to that be sure to like and subscribe and have that notification bell poked so you're notified anytime i post videos and now Coming in at the number five spot is going to be Axis of Evil, and this is the first film in the Axis trilogy, and the reason this one's higher up than some of the other Axis films is that I really appreciate the story in this one, and I love the fact that they go all the way back to that first film. They tie it in right after Toulon's death, the Nazi agents that are looking for the secret to life that he has for the puppets, and then there's somebody who works at the Bodega Inn that Toulon got close with that ends up finding the puppets and using them to his advantage to fight the Japanese and the Nazis to prevent them from blowing up this American factory. So, like, it's just got a really cool story. Like, that's why I love this one so much. There's a lot of puppetry action as well, the introduction of a cool ninja puppet, and I like our villains in this one. There can't be silly, not the best actors, but I love that factor in it. It's like when it goes can't be fun and you really embrace that aspect and you get actors that know what kind of film they're in, it can really work. So coming in at our number four spot, ironically, is going to be Puppet Master 4. And yes, Puppet Master 4 is such an enjoyable ride. I love the fact, like I said, that they embrace in this one and Puppet Master 5, they embrace our puppets as heroes. Rick is our main protagonist character who finds the puppets and he's using them to kind of help out with his technology because he wants to create artificial intelligence and everything. And that's he works for a tech company. So the puppets really interest him and stuff, but then they find out they have to battle a huge villain in Sutek who wants his you know secret to life back that was stolen from him so I know Sutek the villain looks very cheesy and 
this is one of the films where you can really tell that the budget's getting lower and lower because with Puppet Master 1 through 3, I believe they still had the backing of Paramount, so they still had a lot of money in, in their hand to use for these films. And like I said, Puppet Master 4 is the one first one where you can see the budget is really dipping into the lower aspect. Now we're here at the top three, and these were the three that were the hardest for me to like nail down where I wanted to put them and stuff, because for me, these are all like 8.5s or 9 out of 10 type films for me. So it was really hard to kind of figure out which one I enjoy more and stuff. Like you could ask me probably two months from now, and I might have a different kind of re-ranking for the top three, but we're gonna lock it in. This is what it's gonna be for this video. And coming in at the number three spot is gonna be Puppet Master, the original one, the film that started it all, and this is just such a fantastic film that has probably some of the strongest atmosphere in the entire franchise. There's some genuinely creepy moments in this film. This is probably another film kind of close to Littlest Reich where they kind of treat the puppets as just straight up villains, but I still like that aspect of this film, and there's a lot of dream sequence moments and stuff and some brutal kills, especially one that takes place in an elevator when the puppets just get to let loose. Like, there's some genuinely horrific moments in this film and plus I think this one is one of those films that I was saying that uses the psychic concept better and actually adds it to the film and it adds a new layer to it it's not like we're just adding the psychic stuff and doubling down just to have something in our movie coming in at our number two spot the runner up to the top dog and most people's top one and if it is your number one I'm not really you're not going to get a lot of argument out of me and that's Puppet Master 3, Toulon's Revenge, which is probably one of the greatest prequels in a franchise ever. It's so good. One of the best Toulon performances is in this film. A great cast of, you know, puppets and everything. Six Shooter is actually introduced in this film, who's a really cool puppet. So Toulon's Revenge is so good because it actually gets us lets us get to know his character more to be able to sympathize and empathize with him and then also we get to see the creation of blade and why that puppet looks that way and all this kind of stuff so i think this film is a very very freaking fun film and really awesome puppetry work some of the best stop motion animation and puppetry stuff you see in the franchise is in this film now we're here at the top spot the number one spot and like i said you could probably ask me two months from now and i might have a little different spot for these number three but I really do love this film, and I think this is one of the greatest sequels in horror history. Like, I really do adore this film, and that's Puppet Master 2, and this is one of the ones that I've rewatched probably the most, and it's just got such a cool 1930s, like 1940s universal monster type vibe. Blade and Torch are my two favorite puppets, so to see them in this film, and they're pretty much the leads, like the leaders of the puppets, and I like seeing them in that role. And Toulon, another one of my favorite Toulon performances, as he's more of a villain in this film because he's trying to find, like, basically love. And the, he believes there's a woman that comes to the Bodega Inn that is the reincarnation of his wife. And he wants to basically, you know, marry her and stuff, but she doesn't love him. So it's, it's crazy. It has a really good resurrection scene in the beginning, too, that's almost reminiscent of, like, Friday the 13th Part 6, Jason Lives. So, such good stuff, like, very creepy vibes and if I was to say if somebody was to ask me what's the scariest film in the franchise definitely Littlest Reich is the goriest but if you were to ask me what's the scariest one it's Puppet Master 2 and that's probably another reason why I hold this one in such high esteem and why it's sitting here at the number one spot but like I said this is just my list my opinion and my Puppet Master ranking of course if you've seen them all or even if just a few you've seen let me know in the comments section so we can discuss because this is a franchise that I think deserves a lot more eyes on it because it's like it might not be the greatest horror franchise I'm not gonna lie to you but it's definitely not the worst it's got a lot of wholesome awesome vibes really cool music you know the puppets are some of the most iconic characters in horror history so yeah if you haven't seen these films you've seen me talk about all 13 of them and I highly recommend them and there's also a 14th film that I didn't include in this ranking because it barely approaches an hour and I just really didn't think I was like it deserved to be in this list but you could go check it out and if you wanted to know Dr. Death it would probably sit at like the number 13 spot I would probably still put Curse of the Puppet Master below that one, but Dr. Death would be right there at that number 13 spot, and that's a spin-off film as well. But thanks for sticking around with me all for this long one. I know this was a lengthy video of ranking all the Puppet Master films. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel so you get more videos like this, but most importantly, I want you all to have a safe and happy day. Peace out.